What's up and welcome back to another video. Today, if you haven't guessed by the title already, I'm showing you how to rig pixel VTuber models. Now today we're going to be going over three key techniques that I like to use when making these models. If you don't rig pixel art, then you might want to stick around anyways because I'm going to show you how to animate in live 2D mm, briefly. On to the video! Today I'm going to be working with a 64 pixel by 64 pixel model, but I used to have a model that was even smaller and it was just a simple 16 by 16 blob, but it's not big enough. That's what she said. For what I want to show you today. First up, we're going to do some prep work for what I would like to call the smooth rigging technique. Pixel models need to be separated more delicately than normal models because you don't want too many bendy pixels. For now, we're just going to separate the eyes. For objects that tend to move vertically, I separate the pixels based on how they would move. So that there are no weird gaps in the shapes, I try to make my boxes squares or rectangles. If you want a more animated feel, then keep watching. For the eyelashes, we're going to do some prep work for the animation technique. To animate in live 2D, we have to draw all the desired frames. Luckily, my eyelashes are literally two pixels, so we're just going to draw them in an up state and a down state. If you want the eyes to close in a more animated way rather than a smooth way, then the eye will need to be drawn in an open, squint, and closed state. For the inside of the eye, we need to separate the sclera, the iris, the pupil, the highlight, and the shadow. I'll be making another video to go into detail on how I make the mouth table since it's a bit more complex. When cutting the rest of your model, you can separate it like how you would for a normal VTuber model. A good rule of thumb is, if you want it to move on its own, then make it its own separate piece. Now let's get to exporting. This part is key because the art needs to be prepared in a specific format to be rigged in Live 2D. There's three different methods that I found for exporting your model, so you can use whichever technique works for you. If you make your pixel art in a program that lets you export as a PSD, well congratulations, you're already done! You can just skip right to this timestamp, but for everyone else, buckle in your seatbelts. <laughs> So the second method is going from an A sprite file to a Photoshop document. To export your pixel art as a PSD, you'll need a special script that I linked down in the description. This script is for A sprite users. To use the script, you'll need to save it in your A sprites script folder. Once you've downloaded it, be sure to rescan the scripts folder. I cannot tell you how many times I've had to repeat that. Rescan the scripts folder. Rescan the scripts folder. Rescan the scripts folder. <laughs> You'll want to scale up your art before using this script. I noticed that the PSD needs to be opened in a program that can open Photoshop documents and resave so that it can open in Live 2D. But this takes much less time than completely reconstructing your art. If you don't have A-Sprite or aren't able to export as a PSD, then you'll want to do this other method. This one's kind of a pain. You're going to want to export everything as individual PNGs. There's a link for a different script that works with A-Sprite that can scale and export your model as PNGs. It also exports the folders the art is put in, so I would definitely utilize this to make it so much easier. You can then reconstruct your layering directly in Live 2D or in an art software that can export as PSD. To reconstruct in Live 2D, you have to drag and drop the PNGs and not the folders. If you press this folder button, you can make new folders and recreate the layering that you had. To get your model into Live 2D, you want to drop the PSD into the software and create a new model. Before we get to rigging, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on when I make future tutorials. Leave a like if you found this helpful. Okay, thank you! For normal models, I usually just use the mesh generator to get started, but for pixel models, it's much easier if you mesh things by hand as we go along. I always select all the parts of the eye and put them under a single deformer just to keep things organized. For the eyelid, we're going to be using the smooth rigging technique. Create a deformer for each eyelid piece. Select the IR parameter and press the two key forms button while you have all the deformers selected. When the parameter is at zero, the eye should be closed, and at one, the eye should be open. Do the same for the eyelashes by putting them into deformer and adjusting the position at the key frames. Be sure to include all frames for each animation in a single deformer. Next, we're going to animate the eyelashes. For animated rigging, first we have to make a brand new parameter for them. My eyelash parameter is set to negative 1 being the minimum and 1 being the maximum, with 0 being the center. 
since my animation only has three frames, I manually change the key frames position by doing the following. First, we're gonna select all three frames and set up two key forms on the new parameter we just created. Then we're gonna go through and select each individual eyelash and set up what frames it will be visible on. I set the up frame to one and 0.331, the center frame to negative 0.33 and 0.33 and the down frame to negative 0.331 and negative 1. When making animations, you only set up the boxes where the art is visible. When the keyframe dot slides outside of the frames, the art is visible, it automatically makes the art not exist outside the two frames we set. Now on larger scales, you can set this up for complex things such as mouth tables. To figure out the size between your frames, you've got to do a bit of math. So to break down how I did the simple eyelashes, this is the math I used. The absolute value of the maximum negative number plus the absolute value of the positive numbers equals 2 in this case. Then I take that 2, which is the total amount of space I have to separate my frames, and I divide that by the number of frames, which is 3. So 2 divided by 3 is 0.6 repeated, so I know that each of my gaps needs to be at least 0.6 so that way when the lashes animate, it doesn't feel off. Disclaimer, this is for pixel VTuber models and to reduce the amount of frame fading. This is not for normal animation. For the eyes, you can rig them normally. I like to move the pupils and highlights around too, but that's not required. Next, I'm gonna show you how detailed meshing can take pixel models to the next level. Because pixel art is comprised of solid colors, we can move and manipulate the pixels without having to draw new art in the program at all. I'm gonna use detailed meshing on the highlights just to create a different look when the eyes are different shapes. If you click on this, you can edit the mesh directly. So by putting a line down the center of the white and blue pixels, I can move anything on the right side of this line without affecting the left, and so on. Here's a more complex example. Whether you're rigging normal models or pixel art, learning how to mesh is very important. Lastly, I'm going to show you how I apply physics to my pixel models. This is the exact same for normal models as it is for pixel models. Just be careful that the keyframes on the end of the parameters have enough time so that they can be seen and don't feel like they're just flickering for nothing. And just like that, the eyes are done. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around.